down to the Emirates Plaza right now. Justin and Lisa have a special guest, Ernest Goldbliss. Nice win today. Thank you, Mary. Ernest, you're having one of the best runs of your career. You won earlier in the year in Marseille. Everyone's known you've always had the big weapons. You've been explosive. How are you bridging the gap with those unforced errors and the emotional side this year? Well, uh, today was a tough match. You know, I came uh, on court and uh, River played really, really good. He went for the shots. Every every shot he had on the strings, he went for for lines. So, honestly, emotionally, I was uh, a little bit, a little bit on the downside, you know. But then uh, second set, I just changed up the game and just uh, stayed. Uh, I play the best when I show less emotions, you know. Just uh, on the third set, you saw when I broke a racket. It just I, I needed to let loose, you know, and sometimes it helps, sometimes it doesn't, but today, for example, it helps, but uh, in general, I try to avoid uh, um, spending energy on use, useless, useless emotions. Well, this is your third time playing Dimitrov in six weeks. How difficult is that to continue to play the same person, or do you find an advantage of learning his strategy? Well, it would be easier if I would play a weaker opponent, but Grigor is, uh, is a great player, you know, it's, uh, everybody talks about him as the next uh, number one. Uh, I think that he still has a really long way to go because uh, there is some uh, weak spots in his game, you know, and throughout these three matches, you know, I start to realize his uh, weak spots and uh, I think that he saw it, uh, he, he sees it in my game, you know. It's tough, especially mentally, because like I said on court, you know, uh, he's a young guy, I'm already uh, a veteran on tour, if you can call it. Uh, I've, been, I've been around for a while, you know, and. I don't want to let the uh, young guys <laughs> come up too fast. <laughs> you got it to the top 20 for the first time after Acapulco, and instead of resting on that, you mentioned that your goal and you believe that you could be number one in the world. Not a lot of players would admit that. Why are you so able to be that refreshingly candid? Well, uh, if, you, if you know me a bit, I try to always speak up my mind and always say what I think. You know, if I think that I can be number one, uh, I need to believe it, you know, otherwise why I play the sport? You know, I need to set a high goal, you know, and uh, and I realized it maybe uh, two years ago that for my true uh, deep uh, happiness throughout my life, you know, not only throughout my tennis career, but when, when the tennis career is finished, I'll be much more happier if I know that I reached my goals, you know. And that was basically the turning point why I, why I changed uh, from uh, doing all the wrong decisions to start making some decisions right. <laughs> Well, we noticed that you changed your forehand, you have your, you know, your, your guide hand out, you know, in a different direction, and you also have a very extreme grip. Can you tell us a little bit more about why you made the changes and how is it working for you? If you would see videos how I played uh, when uh, I was 16, 17 years old, I don't think there is much, but uh, maybe, maybe you can find some. You, you can see that my swing was really big and okay. really loose, you know, and I was hitting the ball uh, really aggressive and not really thinking about the consequences. And then when I started to play on two, you know, I tried to play too safe and tried to, you know, as my coach now says, you know, uh, I changed myself from a wolf to a sheep, you know, and uh, I need to be a wolf on court. I need to be aggressive. I need to go for the shots. You know, that's my style of game. You know, I cannot change it. And now, that's what I, that's what I'm doing. I'm trying to relax uh, my swing, you know, and uh, just to. That, that's my natural motion. I'm not even thinking about it. You mentioned your coach. It's a unique dynamic where you actually share a coach with another player on the tour who's also having a lot of success here. He's playing Julian Beneteau right now up a break early. Kutu Bresnik, he's one of the most respected veteran coaches. How has he helped your game? I've always heard uh, a lot of good stuff about him throughout the years when, uh, when I was uh, on tour. You know, my fellow, let's say, friend tennis players like Irakli Labaza. Uh, another Georgian guy who wasn't uh, so good on tour, he was uh, ranked 300, you know, then uh, Sargis, Sarsian, you know, all these, all these uh, little bit crazy people used to practice with him, you know, so uh, I was basically ranked, what, uh, 150 in the world, so I had nothing to lose, I came to his academy, and uh, I really like the way he works. We're going to take a look, oh, sorry, go ahead. Oh. We're going to take a look at the extremes of Ernest Gopis. The beautiful serve, you had 10 aces today, and then also the racket, the racket breaking. So we want you to walk us through both techniques, starting off with the great weapon on the serve right here. You serve so well in this match. Walk us through the technique and how you execute this. Well, my serve, if you know a thing called Russian roulette, then, <laughs> then, then you know, you know, basically I throw the ball now up and, and I really hope that uh, it's not gonna <laughs> go somewhere too far away from me. And then I just go for it. Very and, deep knee bend. It's, 
honestly, you know, the serve has been uh, my most natural shot. I haven't worked on it maybe as much as I did on my other shots. You know, I came uh, to uh, Nikki Pilic Tennis Academy when I was uh, uh, 14 years old, you know, and always it was really natural motion. Oh, that seems like your most is, natural this, this shot is really right good. there. This is great stuff. There's such beautiful flow, this and you get extra stuff. momentum into it. This is, this is this is this is great stuff. This is when the emotions come out, you know. But I, I, I honestly think it's uh, not that bad, you know. It's not that bad for uh, for the sport, you know. If some guys, some guys do it, you know. You have to be still uh, respectful to your opponent. You cannot uh, uh, break his game or break his rhythm, you know. To the crowd, you also have to be respectful. But it's my record. <laughs> I respect it or not. It's my business. <laughs> But think about that, the fact that you had so much emotion in it and you were down and said, how do you recover mentally to be able to get back in it and come back and win? The racket, I think I broke in the third set and that was uh, around 3 all. you know, when, when the frustration right. was uh, when I couldn't break him. But uh, after after the first set, yeah, after the first, it's, it's uh, I just went for my shots, you know, I just didn't think and uh, I just went for some shots and I was lucky to break him early. That was the key. Ernest, thanks very much. Next up will be Batista Agut. Now, there's a good omen there. You've played him twice, you've beaten him twice, and you've won both of those events, St. Petersburg and Marseille, earlier in the year. So hopefully for you, that continues. Well done. Congratulations on winning the third match against Dimitrov. More tennis when we come back.